Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk There movies. is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. Congratulations. On behalf of the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know, you are now a member of the Jedi Alliance. May the Force be with you, always. Hello, Schmoville. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. <laughs> I'm Ken Napsock here for the Jedi Alliance. You, of course, can follow along on our Facebook page, the Jedi Alliance on the Schmoes No Network, and on Twitter, j- at Jedi Alliance SK. And don't forget Instagram, Jedi Alliance, where I've taken some pictures of our set today. And it's changed a bit because today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Legos. Now, first, though, you may notice to my left, first, actually, you may notice... I'm on the right, or at least right on set here, left on screen, because our beloved Madawan Mod Garrett, uh, she's taken a Star Tours shuttle to uh, where Naboo. She's traveling to Naboo. <laughs> she's on Star Tours right now with uh, uh, Paul Rubens driving that ship here. But I am joined today by two uh, young Star Wars fans, and I use that word carefully today because I want to get into a discussion about generational uh, Star Wars fans. Yeah. Um, so uh, without further ado, it is... The lovely Sarah Stratton. Hello, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Co-host of Box Office Breakdown here on the Popcorn yes. Talk Network and also many, many After Buzz shows. Lots of podcasting. Absolutely. Lots of podcasting. And uh, you are a Star Wars fan because I learned this because one day I was leaving the Jedi Alliance studios here in the cantina and I passed by and I had a box uh, with my Jabba the Hutt Black Series Comic-Con exclusive in it and you were like, hey, you, what's that? <laughs> What's that say Star Wars on it? I was like, what's in the box? (laughs) What's in the box? (laughs) What's in the box? box? And uh, that's how we started our uh, professional relationship here at AfterBuzz. Nice. Exactly. I got very intrigued by you always carrying around a bunch of gadgets. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) always full of surprises. Whenever an old guy passes by with a box of Star Wars toys, it should pique some curiosity (laughs) or uh, raise some eyebrows. And uh, next to you, of course, is Christian Ruvacabla, a.k.a. Cobster, a.k.a. the associate producer of the Schmuck. No movie show yes. uh, that uh, we broadcast live every Thursday night, 6 p.m. PST. My hand picked apprentice yes. from the producer chair. Yes. One yeah. day I will walk off into the sunset and hand you the clipboard. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to kill you in your sleep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, much I, like, oh, uh, we're I Sith. See, already started we're going already. Sith here. I <laughs> see. I'll watch yeah. my back now. Yeah. Uh, of course, Christian, I've known now for about a year and a half through the Schmoes No World, and yeah. I know you're a big Star Wars fan. Big time. You're yeah. always kind of jonesing to talk Star Wars yes, with us, always. and I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you Happy to have me. both of you here to join in. Thank yeah. you. And uh, Maud, wherever you are, watching from some TV hut on uh, Naboo or some tropical paradise. Uh, we do miss you because I already messed up some of my homework that I realized right when the show started about Duel of the Fates. But let's get <laughs> into what we call here the five most important Star Wars questions. And this will open up some of the discussion I wanted to have. So I'm going to put it to you guys first, individually. Sarah, I want to ask you first. Ooh, when... I get the first question. Ladies All first. Right. When was your first time seeing Star Wars? My first time was going to be in my parents' house when I was about, when I was a teenager. This guy introduced mm. me when I was like 12, and I had the three VHS set, and I took them from my parents, and I watched them, and I fell in love, and I was pretty alone in it, though. <laughs> so what, you stole, you went in, you like moved past like the alcohol and the porn or anything, you're like, oh, so they got Star Wars. For some reason, the movies that I took from my parents were, I got Star Wars, I got Indiana Jones, and I got Pretty Woman. And that's that's we good could good be friends. That's nice. Yeah. We could be friends. I once saw Pretty Woman five times in one day. That's one of the, my biggest accomplishments in life. I don't think I was supposed to see Pretty Woman, but I did. At that I age, found, no. I found uh, it. At that no. age, no. All right. So you said you were alone in your love of Star Wars. Yes. Com- like, what do you mean? It. I mean, my parents had the films, but it wasn't something that I was really a world I was like brought into, yeah. or that people were like, excited about. They wanted me to like join the conversation. It was something that I really had to kind of search out hmm. and find and maybe I loved the force led you there <laughs> yes. I think so yeah mm-hmm. I felt like the, I felt it I just felt the pull it surrounded you it penetrated <laughs> I felt you. the energy yeah. <laughs> um yeah and so 
but it was it was constantly watching that set yeah. of VHSs just nice. over and over again. Did did you feel it's a great question as as a as a young girl growing up did mm-hmm. you feel was it like I'm not supposed to be liking this stuff or how was it? It wasn't as much as I wasn't supposed to. Um I <laughs> I just didn't really have friends who enjoyed mm. it as much. I remember introducing I actually introduced some of my like college girlfriends to yeah. Star Wars. And I was shocked that they'd never seen them. Yeah. And a lot of them did not get it. And it was really sad and like heartbreaking for me. Well, the, one of the things I have, we, we live in a very geek centric culture where nerdness is a, is a brand. And it's, it's very easy to just assume, yeah, there's a ton of cool geek chic girls out there who love Star Wars. I think if you get outside that bubble, sometimes it is harder to find. My hometown, there's like two girls that like Star Wars. <laughs> And that's kind of an argument I can get into sometimes mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah, no, down here in L.A., you're surrounded by these amazing, yeah. wonderful women who love Star Wars. Where were you my entire life type situations? Yeah. But in well, other I'm areas, from L.A., so. But, that might <laughs> but I'm, so I'm intrigued by that. So you found that you had to kind of spread the word yourself. Yeah, um, I definitely had to introduce some of my friends to it. Mm. And my whole and honestly, the people who I've talked to Star Wars most about have been guys. So it's a hard argument to push that yeah. it is a girl thing. I think there are girls out there. Yeah. And I have met a few great fans, people yeah. associated with Schmoes. And, but overall, it's overwhelmingly always been guys. It generally is. It's still, it's still the business model, mm-hmm. which is yeah. why some of the casting controversies last year, they're still going for what they know as their demographic. Mm-hmm. However, it is a great thing to, it's only, I want everyone to love this. So uh, I love that fate led you to your parents' yeah, I, I closet. So. Nice. Yes. Moving past the Christmas gifts. I want your VHS Star Wars tapes. Yes. Or was it DVD by that time? <laughs> Oh, no, I still have the VHSs. Nice. nice. Yeah. The original ones have or them. re-released ones? No, I have the originals. The black ones. So you mm-hmm. learned the right way. Yes. yes. That's, That's great. great. I have the old school ones. Cobster, your first time? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of more the same way in, as far as like the VHSs. I remember seeing uh, Return of the Jedi the most because obviously that's the one you, you show your kids first because there's all the uh, Ewoks in there. It's a lot more kid-friendly than Empire and stuff. What? I'm like, just, is, are you sure that's the one? You, if so, when you have children, are you going to... We're starting with Jedi because you're gonna like the fuzzy bears. <laughs> no, but I felt like everyone that I like when I watched this show, everyone said Jedi, Jedi, Jedi. Like that. Jedi was my one. first too yeah. because I was seven when I saw it in the theater. Right, but my real first great experience. Yes. My first. Great... I watched them in order. Oh, okay. That's well, good. You're, you're lucky. Well, my first real experience is my grandpa. He was really into Star Wars. He's the one that got me into all this, and uh, he took me to go see the re-release in '97 before right. Phantom, came, Phantom Menace came out. And to me, that felt like the first experience, like seeing A New Hope on the big screen for the yeah. very first time was just, it, it hit me differently than any other movie has ever done. That's great. I always say, like, again, I'm a huge Beatles fan, and, you know, I wasn't alive when the Beatles were rocking and rolling, but I found them very organically in 1987. It wasn't like someone was like, here, you must like it. It was like I, my friend was like, hey, I found this tape deck, and organically I found it. So each generation kind of organically can find Star Wars. It's more available. It's more in your face. You go to yeah. a toy aisle. What is that? But I like that you're like, this is... This yeah. For you in 97, that was no different than someone in 77. Yeah. That's it was, awesome. It was a really, really cool experience. So quickly then, uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie is got to be A New Hope. Uh, okay. I really, really love the first one so much just because it, it introduces everyone to these characters. And you know everyone goes off and says Empire is the best one, which I'll agree to that. I'll say Empire is the best one, but my favorite is A New Hope just because the whole spectacle of it, of introducing an Obi-Wan sure. Kenobi just being in there. We, yeah. we don't get A New Hope a- answered a lot. It's usually yeah. Empire yeah. and Jedi yeah, uh, and one Phantom Menace. Yeah. That episode never aired. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, for you, it's Empire? I, I do have to go with Empire. Mm. Just... It just really dove me into the world, mm-hmm. all the different places and locations, and I like I like the darkness to it. Mm-hmm. Really, I, yeah. you're I such do. a cheery, sunny yeah, person. <laughs> it's it's that's all fake. You, you want to go into that cave? Oh yeah. <laughs> Your weapons you will not need. No, I want to be in the cave. You want to be oh, in the cave. I want to be, be in the, the cave. Wow. Yeah. Um, n- no, but yeah, Empire completely. I just I found it thought provoking, and it was one that I could always go back and just watch. You thought Yoda over was over. cute too, huh? I love Yoda, yeah, and Yoda's I great. love how he talks. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. I love how he talks, yeah, too. too. I, I saw in the theater Jedi uh, one of the second or third times, I think I saw in the theater, my, my young sister, she was like four or five at the time. Uh, when Yoda died, she screamed, oh. Yodio, Yodio, <laughs> and we had to take her out. My mom had to take her Yodio. out. Yodio. Nice. That's where Yodi died. originated yeah. from. Right, yes. the, the, the Mark Riley term. <laughs> um, favorite character, Sarah? Darth Vader. 
Nice. Vader. You are Vader. A dark person. Vader. Ah, you want to be in the cave. Your favorite character is Darth Vader. Are, do you, are you, you dating bad boys in your life here? What's going on here? Do we have to talk about this? Very nice guys. Well, with a dark side, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Hopefully not. What no. draws you to Vader? I, I, I just felt for me, he's, first of all, I love so many of his lines. I love sure. his presence on screen. Mm -hmm. I The moment he walks into any scene, he's the one I watch. I like his character arc. I like, and I'm not talking about including the pickles. I'm talking about the character arc and his history, like just within the originals. Yeah. And then three. He's, and he has one of my, my, one of the worst moments that I find the funniest. Right. Like I, I, everyone hates the no and I just crack oh. up every Ugh. time. Yeah, I find happen. it funny. The no? Yeah. I all, yeah. I just do. I don't know oh, why. That's kind of but painful. I do. I find it funny. You can insult me. I'm, I love Vader. Yeah. So like pretty much he can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's I mean he can thing. kill younglings, but he can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're dark. He's dark. Very very dark. I you got to get to this dark side. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cops, well, sir? I will bring the lighter side of this yeah. duo right here. Um, I'm gonna go with Obi Wan Kenobi. I really okay. really love Obi Wan okay. Kenobi, uh, especially yeah. what Alec Guinness did. With his character mm -hmm. in the very first movie. I mean, I remember when he gets spoiler alert when he gets killed off in A New Hope. That no! just that just oh that killed me. And because he he's just like like that father figure that you've always wanted, like father grandfather figure, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Just so wise and you know it's always so comforting to be around and not in a creepy way either. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. But just, you went there. Just wanted to bring it. You know, you, I like you, I like both your answers. Um, Darth Vader, that's that's intriguing, and I think you had mentioned it the other night when we were talking. But but to, to, the Vader's the joy here. that's coming out of your eyes when you're like Vader. <laughs> but New Hope and Obi Wan, yeah. man, that's some mm -hmm. old school answers. I love it. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of people skip over New Hope in a weird way. Yeah. Even myself, it's probably the one I've seen the least. Yeah. Uh, not counting prequel stuff out of the originals because I'm just gravitate towards the other right. ones. Jedi was my first Empire. I watched Empire this morning as I was getting ready for the nice. show. Uh, and New Hope sometimes it, it, I skip over it for some reason. I don't know why. But I can I can pop that one in. I pop that one probably even at least a couple of times a month because um, I'll go around and I'll watch a trilogy. You know, maybe like once a month. Mm. And, but a New Hope I will watch multiple times. I can watch that movie over and over. It just never gets old to me. And Alec Guinness is just he's really the the main reason why I love that movie so much. I like it. Yeah. Can you do a Crat Dragon call? Oh my god, the new one? Ooh. Yeah, not the new I, one. I, the old I one. honestly can't remember what the old one sounded like sounded because of like, the ah! And now it's something just something like that. And it just sounds like yeah. a bumbling <laughs> drunk idiot. If Maud was here, she would do it perfectly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Sarah, you mentioned Vader has some of your favorite scenes and favorite quotes, so that's mm -hmm. our next question. What is your favorite quote of Star Wars that you use in everyday life? <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing has to be my favorite or most used I, I, I can't even look her in the eyes I'm so scared being right next yeah. to you right now you're going to force joke darkness me there's darkness yeah. coming out of it yeah it's like you don't know what's going so to come you use next. that just often so in your, in your romantic life that probably comes up <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing pretty much okay nice and then what follows you know yeah. joke will die Okay. Or just you know, suffocate um, for a little bit. For me, I don't use this one in everyday life, but uh, uh, the one my favorite is, uh, who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool that follows him? <laughs> I just really love that I quote. just used that the other day at work. Nice. I just yes. did that. Yeah. I need to start. It's a great one. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. the stay on target one is the one that stay I on always target. probably stay. I can't shake him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Another Vader one I use, I do use a lot is impressive. Most impressive. I, I do use that one a lot. Vader Vader and Obi-Wan oh, both have great quotes. The Vader one. just so easy. Yeah. The whole, everything. The one Vader one that I really like is uh, all too easy and it just I'm just going to convert switch. you all to one. Vader's yeah, going to be your one. favorite character uh, what is your favorite force skill then this one I'm torn about it's like <sighs> part of me wants to say like Jedi mind trick but okay. I just really find like if I could look for cute people it would just <laughs> really Jesus suit Christ. me well <laughs> just and lift them up and throw them against things wow. I can, I can imagine I just feel like that's just as it's just as persuasive. I can imagine Stratton like, oh, now you will die. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Really well. Okay, I'm I terrified. mean, my and favorite. And I like have that hand. Yeah, bump. you gotta get the like weird like. With a slight shake. <laughs> 
Uh, my favorite is force choke. So I, I do go a little dark yeah. on that. Well, yeah. For me, um, I go. I, I think I guess you would say force push is one of my favorite moments and one of the only moments that I really like in Phantom Menace. It's when Darth Maul he just he literally oh, yeah. just points at one thing and he tells it to go somewhere else just with his head. And yep. I just, like it's like you there. And I, I would love like remote you here. And I just wouldn't have to do anything. One of my favorite moments in Menace too with the force push is I think it's Obi Wan or Qui Gon. I can't remember. They're fighting the battle droids mm-hmm. on the boo and they give a force push and the droids make that horrible sound <laughs> when they hit the wall yeah. what was that like he puts his lightsaber away and just ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's this weird sound all right so you're still you're still dark guy you are really dark so this the final question i know the answer to um but i'll ask you anyways if given the opportunity would you turn towards the dark side of the force i think i was just born on the dark but side the question is the for you would you redeem yourself and go good Hmm. I don't know. I can't see that. You're, you're, you're yeah. just, uh, she's It's not, like I feel yeah. like I need to say yes because like that's the nice yeah, thing you to feel do. Guilty saying no, that, yeah. but... stay true to thine self. <laughs> nah. If you're Sith, if she's like nah, whatever Jedi, <laughs> whatever Jedi, <laughs> Cobster, you're um, you are right. representing the good side. Yeah, here. I mean, I like to say that I wouldn't turn to the dark side. I can get yeah. into some dark places, but I don't. I don't think I would. Look, it's been yeah. proven they don't have cookies, so yeah. you can't go yeah. there. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think I would. I'm so, going to bring some cookies. <laughs> I don't know. She's starting to turn me right now. Do though. you I mean, want some cookies? <laughs> so we have, if, it's kind of like the Clone Wars episode, uh, the, the the arc on the planet Mortis. Yep. We kind of got the, the good and the, the good and the bad the son and daughter and of, yeah. of the Force, and I'm mm-hmm. the old Force dude who's <laughs> just kind of nice. sitting there. Um, keeping you guys from fighting. That is uh, that is good. But I want to talk a little bit, uh, a moment here about, like I said, the generational thing. Uh, I, I make fun of... of the age difference, but really, I love the fact that Star Wars goes on and on and on, and Lucas kind of designed it that way. As much as we maligned the prequels, mm-hmm. guess what it did? It introduced Star Wars to an entire new generation of people, and that's what you got to do to keep the brand going. So you guys both discover it year-wise in the mid-90s, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're digging through the closet and you pull, mm-hmm. and it comes out on VHS, did you have a frame of reference? Did you have to go to mom and dad and be like, "What? what is this? It's It was one of those things, as soon as like I opened the door, mm-hmm. Then it appears everywhere. And like I had a neighbor who had yeah. everything. Mm. And then it's, it's like one of those things as soon as you know it's there, it just pops up everywhere. And then you can't you can't hide from like, yeah. and Star Wars is generational, but it's also everlasting, like in sure. the merchandising and everything. It's never stopped. It, it, and it so if you, really no matter been. when you find it or fall in love with it, it's accessible. Yeah. yeah, and that continues, and now we have all the new films coming out. And that's new people, but it's never been like a movie, and then and then that's it, yeah. and then it deadens. It never, there's Makes never sense. a dull moment in right. the franchise. So I think that that's the beauty of it is that any time you enter it, mm-hmm. there's something new for you to find. Yeah, mm-hmm. like there's something that's new to all the Star Wars fans always coming out. So you feel included. It's not like if I refer to like I talked about how I found Indiana Jones at the same time, mm-hmm. and that's a universe that or a story that existed and then it kind of it just died forever and then eventually we got another one but it's completely separate yeah. there was yeah. nothing really new coming out when star wars there's always something new so you can c- become intertwined in it at any time and feel a part of it i, agree I don't feel saying. distanced yeah. from the franchise i don't feel like i'm not included i feel like i can say i'm a star wars fan it was like introduced in the world exactly everyone lives in indiana my favorite film character of all time is indiana jones but the indiana jones world is not as big in terms of this community mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. there's books there's comics yeah. there's an awesome mm-hmm. ride at disneyland as well yeah. there's mm-hmm. action figures that never caught on so mm-hmm. it kind of it is what it is it, yeah. it is a great and Indi- raiders of the lost ark is a perfect movie and all that stuff but i agree once you plug into star wars there's a whole world out there and i'm yeah. not just talking expanded universe yeah. just on the playground and everything did you guys now growing up at Margaret Harlow Elementary School in Arroyo Grande, California on the playground me and my friends Star Wars at recess was a big thing we designed characters today you're going to be Princess Leia I don't care if you're a boy you're going to be it you're going to be Han Solo and we go act out that's fine we actually had this because back in the day our playgrounds were made of solid wood with metal uh, like stapled to the wood for a slide (laughs) Uh, it kind of resembled a uh, the the um, so over the Sarlacc pit, the the little oh, skiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd reenact Jedi all the time at nice. lunch, and like flip around and catch, and then you get a splinter in your hand. 
Recess fun? Did you guys play it? I was always the the one that tried doing that. We're like, nah, no, we're one gonna, wanted we're to gonna go you? play kickball. I mean, there, there, like maybe like in first grade, there would be some kids that would want to like, oh, let's play this. And they're like, no, I want to play Jurassic Park or Mortal Kombat. And I was like, what, what about Star Wars? And like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to play Star Wars. No, Mm-mm. so yeah. I would always try it, but never. On really. reset, wait, recess, Sarah, mm-hmm. where you're recess, like, Sarah. okay, when I do this, that's electrical <laughs> bolts, and you're dead. Um, when I was at recess, I liked to climb everything. Right. Mm. So I would climb on top of the structure and then it would be more of like yelling at Sarah to get down. <laughs> so the teachers like, were kind of playing along with you. Yeah, hello. I can see you being yeah. the ones like, no, we're playing Star Wars and you're not playing anything else. Yeah. 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 Cr- Definitely there was a, a lot of more like battles. I liked any type of battle nice. game or climbing. Mm-hmm. Right. Nice. Mm-hmm. Christian, when you uh, discovered it in the mid-90s here, you're at the uh, re-releases in 97 and see it again for mm-hmm. the first time. What did you do right after when you're like, whoa, how did you plug into the world? Who did you ask? Who did you find uh, things from? My, my grandpa, for sure. Because okay. he was very much into Star Trek, and you know he saw the movie. You know that's was, a different one, right? Yes, that's okay. yeah, that's totally different. But he was he was really into um, science fiction in general, and mm-hmm. Star Wars kind of being this a lot bigger spectacle. He took me to go see this, and I was like, what is this? What is this? And you know, I was like, is Vader really his father? You know, and all yeah. And um, he, yeah, he just introduced me to this whole new world, and then eventually it kind of crossed over into what I loved in my personal life. You know, if you want to sum up my childhood it's like power rangers pokemon and you know legos star wars and star wars legos star actually. wars legos okay yeah and so i'm here today and uh and so yeah that that was just kind of the thing i did like i need figures i never really had action figures mm. per se but uh once it came out with these like in 98 or 99 or whatever it was i was like i need to get these and yeah. i need to play with them and i need to reenact these movies as soon as possible it, which is exactly what i was doing in 1983 so again it, it keeps going like yeah. you said outside of People don't remember, and I mentioned it before, 90, 89, 90, 91, Star Wars was this thing that just had, it had happened. Mm-hmm. It was big, you figures, but it, it was just kind of there. Yeah. And then Heir to the Emperor comes out in 91, Timothy Zahn's first novel, mm-hmm. and was like, oh, Star Wars is back. So yeah. there was only, but even then, it was still there. We still yeah. talked about it. Yeah. it. Just We didn't have a lot of new stuff to play along with. Well, that is uh, how we get to know our guests on the show and how much they love and appreciate Star Wars. Uh, one day, we're going to bring on someone who doesn't, and then we're just going to force choke them and let yes. you. Ooh, can I be there? Yeah, we'll bring, I'll, I'll, I'll plan ahead. <laughs> she jumped ahead. right at that. Can I, can I kill someone? Please don't we just... <laughs> Love it, I love it. So we're going to move on to Renewed Hope, which is our segment each week in which we take a look at this week in Star Wars news. Now, with Maud out and about, there's no way we could do this news normally with Queen Amadala addressing her people. Uh, she is, uh, like I said, uh, out in the galaxy, so uh, she is not going to watch her people suffer today doing the news. I will not do it justice, but we're just going to talk about one news story because it's the only real news story I want to discuss today, yes. which is this week... Disney, Lucasfilm, surprised us over our breakfast by releasing the title to Episode 7. That tiny little thing here <laughs> is uh, The Force can see that? Awakens. I can see, yeah, I can. Star Wars Episode 7, <gasps> The Force Awakens. So exciting. Thoughts. Uh, Cobster. Well, we had talked about this, and you know, even via text, you know, their whole Schmo's crew. Uh, it is a safe title. It really is. It's it's nothing that's too. It's, it's no Empire Strikes Back. I'll say that. Yeah. But still, what really excited me? It's like it's real. This this is a real thing. Sure. They finished filming. There's an actual title now. We get to see the Force and Awakens along with Force and Awakens. Other, the Force and Awakens. For, you said, I think you said the Uh-oh. Misa says the Force and Awakens. Oh gosh, JC is no. rubbing off on me again. Um, but yeah, uh, all these titles, just seeing them all together like that, it's just so, so exciting. Okay. Yeah. I, I can get behind that. There's just mm-hmm. some excitement that it's there. Yep. We know it's happening. Now we now we know it's really happening. Yes. Mm-hmm. Stratton? Um, so I don't have a huge problem with the title, as some people do. Like, The Force Awakens, I, I kind of knew that something about The Force was going to be yeah. in the title. So mm-hmm. it wasn't shocking. Personally, my biggest beef with the title announcement is how it was announced. Okay. Just I just, it. yeah, I just felt like... The fans are what have made the the title announcement important. It's everyone talking about it that's made it interesting. Mm-hmm. But they just kind of fluffed it Boop. off. Yeah. It was nothing. And like, uh, I talked about this a little while ago where, mm. um, where I was just like, I want, I want an extravaganza. You, you, I wanted the trailer Christmas with the title. Yeah. I wanted something bigger. <laughs> and this was just like, oh, here you go. Thank you, Twitterverse, for making this ginormous. Yeah. And I guess maybe because it's not a Well, we're so Twitter. used I, to, to Disney Marvel doing, inviting yeah. all the journalists to one theater and going, hey, you know, here's our big extravaganza. So, yeah, it just kind of, like, I saw it on Twitter first and thought, oh, is that a, is that a joke? Mm-hmm. Someone trolling yeah. again. But that just, I agree that, that dropped the ball for me. I was just like, you know this is so important to people, and everyone's going to talk about it yeah. anyway. Like, 
You've put so much effort into a movie. I well, at least I'm hoping you're putting a lot of effort I into a movie. I, you can make the title announcement a little bit better. Come on. I agree with that too because one of the main reasons why I was excited for a teaser trailer because we don't really need to see much with a teaser trailer, but I would have loved it if we didn't know the title and then just at the very end of that teaser trailer, it showed the title right there. I think this like the amount of chills that I got actually reading the t- the, mm-hmm. the title on the text or whatever it was would have been so much more better yeah. if seen on the big so, screen. It wasn't an exp- it wasn't an experience for me to turn on my computer and it be a little like mm-hmm. news feed yeah. right. that the title was released. Like I wanted to be in an experience as a fan. Like I wanted to be in the world mindset and yeah. hear about it. This it I was just that. like See, I didn't have a problem with that because I'm in that mindset every day. I woke up and put on my Jedi robe, and I practiced with my lightsaber, and then the news hit. (laughs) Nice. Um, (laughs) But I I actually understand what you're saying. Uh, It just was such a, a, almost an anticlimactic thing. But again, I don't know. I mean, again, if we all knew it was coming out in a trailer, we'd all rush to see, you know, Into the Woods or or wherever they think the trailer's going to be on. And it would have been cool if it had been closer to Comic-Con, San Diego Mm Comic-Con, I should say. Uh, or even New York Comic Con, if they'd done it on a big one and had a Hall H type panel, I would have totally agreed with that, and yeah. at least would suffice. Or something, or something more involving the cast, or. Yeah. But let, I just let, let, let's talk about the title after. itself. Mm-hmm. I personally, I don't dislike it, and I want people to realize that I don't dislike the title. I don't love it. It sounds like a video game to me. It sounds yeah. like a fan fiction novel, uh, as I made on jokes on the yeah. main show last week. But I also want everyone to know I'm not being one of those cynical internet people. I actually, I get it. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like Star Wars to me. I don't know what I wanted instead. Mm-hmm. I didn't want Attack of the Clones. <laughs> I personally actually grew to like the Phantom Menace as a oh, title. Oh, yeah. I hate mm-hmm. that title. I'm sorry. I, I, I get it now. Because I think it is, because that's what it is. It was because of Darth Plagueis that I really liked it. Yeah. I mentioned the, if the you Phantom read Menace. the book Darth Plagueis. Yeah. Hey, have we mentioned that book before here <laughs> or on Far, Far Away with Christian Harloff? Yeah. Yes. Um, again, I, so I don't dislike the title. It just, yeah, all right, that's Star Wars. Give it a De Niro. Like. But let's, let's put that stuff aside for a second and let's speculate what you think that title means the force has been sleeping yeah. for 30 if years if the phantom menace was about a phantom menace mm-hmm. and if revenge of the sith was about sith getting revenge and yeah. attack the clones was about a clone's <laughs> defense force wait the clones never attacked <laughs> why call it it's never never mind yeah um any any what do you think that what does that awaken in you as a I fan i mean it's definitely that i think i think it's going to be the n- some new generation there's been some disturbance in the fourth yeah. that's made awake it's definitely coming from the dark side mm-hmm. and we're going to see some i feel like there's going to be a huge huge presence of the dark side and then yeah. we're going to be starting to see the the good side of the force popping mm-hmm. up in like um she just can't even say the good side no, she, she has to spit it out I'm of like, her mouth it with, like hurts her to like, say like, you see me i'm yeah. like the dark, dark side, side of the force. <laughs> this monumentous like <laughs> volcano <laughs> eruption in the, the, this, yeah. the good yeah. side the good side <laughs> like they you, you know like springing up and the like, goody two shoe nerds over at and the chamber and they're all like exactly they're not really <laughs> unified or anything and they have to find each other and they don't know what's really happening cuz the force is like hasn't really Awoke yet. Present. Yeah. yeah. I'll, you know? agree, I'll agree with that too. I and I, I like the rumors coming out about like Luke not really using his powers. He's been hiding away this whole time. Yeah. And it even goes for Leia. Leia. I, should, I think he has Kurt, to come Kurt, back because Kermit, people's uh, trying Kermit, to get things Kermit going. Arms, Kermit arms. Just in case any of this is uh, spoilers, that's yes. our international spoiler alert, mm-hmm. the Kermit, the frog arms. Yes. Uh, we're not going to get into the spoilers, but speculation mm-hmm. might might ruin it for some people. But mm-hmm. uh, I should have done that before. But so yeah, we, we've heard some of the stuff about yeah. Luke. Luke's gone away. That's why he has a big beard because that's what a big beard means. Yeah. You just and not only me, the beard means teacher but i would agree it could be yeah but i also like the idea of leia too because she also has the powers and she's most likely going to be in some kind of political position and maybe she's trying wait do you think she has like full powers or do you think she's just in tune like like in air the empire there's like one scene where she closes the door on han or something like that but it's more of like like she's in tune with force and it's not really she's never really like exemplified that's a great question because in that in this time period maybe she goes we're all assuming she becomes some kind of politician maybe that's yeah. a good bet mm-hmm. but maybe in 30 maybe years maybe she has done some maybe training. she had like a 15 year run as a real badass jedi chick you know yeah, maybe. maybe she learned from luke and I or maybe i just that. feel like if you have that much time and you know mm-hmm. that there is those capabilities within you have to like play a little well, bit yeah wouldn't you want to yeah if you be yeah, yeah. exactly but it'll be interesting how far she has come and how much she invests in that yeah, yeah that's true 
Mm-hmm. But yeah. we'll see. All right. We'll so see. that's uh, for me. Uh, I think it kind of represents what we've been talking about. Uh, there, things have been dormant. Things have maybe been not that they have been without wars or anything like that. But I, I think uh, something is gathering. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad there's an a dawn or a rise in the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some dark force. The force doesn't necessarily mean good. That's it could true. be bad. That is very true. The force they, is they coming up. Something up. You know, ah. so I'm excited. Mm. And, uh, I, you know, who knows? I'm not ruling out some kind of appearance from Darth Plagueis the Wise. I would love that. I would really, yeah. really love that. That's why I want to read Tarkin to see well, if they mention Tarkin, something. Well, mm-hmm. Tarkin, I haven't read it yet, but I have read some things about it. James Lucino's book. Mm-hmm. And I talked to Darth Harloff Let's about see. it last night at uh, the wonderful party we got to attend for uh, Shirak Vodka. Threw us a nice little pineapple-themed party. Yeah, it was very yeah. tropical. We had some fun with that. Uh, but we were talking there in between drinks as grown men do when they're drinking. Let's talk about Star Wars, dude. Uh, there's some references in the book Tarkin to Plagueis oh, and great. events of the novel Labyrinth of Evil, which is another mm. James Lucino book that follows Revenge of the Sith, which is a very mm. good and underrated Star Wars book. Um, so we know Plagueis is canon because of Revenge of the Sith, yes. but the fact that it how it's it all got started. Building yeah. and references to it, mm-hmm. it's a good thing. Good thing. You oh, excited seriously. about Darth Plagueis? Come on. <laughs> Yeah. You like the dark side of the force. I do. I He's do. The, he is the Phantom Menace. Yeah. Plagueis and Sheev like is what they should call the next, the next spinoff. Pla- like Plagueis and Sheev. That's like a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> too many Siths. No, too many Siths. Sheev. <laughs> Sheev. All right. Gosh. Next up is what we do here every week is Star Paws. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But here's the deal. I don't know. Here's the deal with... with Dear Marty, traveling in the galaxy, there's no way I'd, I'd have uh, this our normal Star Paws competition go on and not give her a chance to catch up on her own power. So mm-hmm. I was thinking of uh, pitting you two against each other. And I was thinking I would just take that card out of your hand and nope. you could replace her. Oh, you, you don't want to participate? Let's see how you I'm really scared are. of... Yes, I'm scared of trivia. I get really clammy. Like, on box office breakdown, I lose every competition... <laughs> So what do we think? Be in trivia. JT, Don't do I'm, well JT, together. I'm going to need an impartial judge here. Do you think JTE? Sarah, Remember, you have to do a show with me. Do you think Let Sarah? Her play. Yes. JTE. Good. All right. I've been. I've. I Good. think we got to do it. All right. So bad I just want to see her upset copster. This is. Yeah, it's <laughs> All right. So this so week, bad. Stratton versus no. copster. <laughs> Darth Stratton oh, versus Obi Wan Cubster. Yes. yes. All right. Here we go. Just jump in with your uh, first answer, all right? Okay. No buzzers needed. Who said the ability to destroy a planet was insignificant to the power of the Force? Darth Vader. <sighs> Sarah got that one. Oh, She's wow. on the board one. Okay, I got you're, one. Okay, you're, you're, you're four. okay, fine. I'll go yeah. next one then. Okay. <laughs> Who took out a Scout Walker pilot with a single, well-placed blaster shot? Princess Leia. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Chewbacca. It is Princess Leia. Stratton's oh, up on the no. board. Oh, wow. What is happening? Okay. Wow. Who, according to the Emperor, did Luke feel compassion for, which would be his undoing? Oh, Vader. um, n- no. It's Leia and... No. Shit. I'm afraid Copster got that one. Yeah. <laughs> two to one. Two to one. Oh, I What's almost just cast. The... I'm so sorry if I cast on that. That's you okay. heard that. What's the predominant environment of Yavin's fourth moon? Oh, uh... Go back oh. to your high school. Hold on. Studies. Can you repeat the question again? What is the predominant environment of Yavin's fourth moon? Uh, the red planet. Red planet. Red moon. Oh, man. Uh, I don't, you I don't need no an answer idea. in five. Grand Canyon. Four. Red dust. Three. No, it is jungle. Oh, <laughs> dumb with the bases. Ah, that's a trick. Okay. Uh, yes. Why did Luke think R two D two wouldn't run away after he removed his restraining bolt? Uh, he won't get very far. He wouldn't go very far. Why? Restraining bolt. Oh, uh, he wouldn't get very far. Why did I don't why, know what the reason wh- is. Wh- loyalty? Wait, re- 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 one more time. One more why time. did Luke think R two D two wouldn't run away after he removed his restraining bolt? Gosh, it's a hard one. I don't know if I. I think I don't. Know, I don't know if I can pull this one out. He's too small. Oh. All right, final question. But if no, but I'm winning. I want you're no winning, more but questions. But if Copster ties, we got to go to a tiebreaker okay, question. We'll tie no. <clears throat> what did the Emperor use to physically attack Luke Skywalker? Lightning bolts. No, I want to do the motion. I win. <laughs> Copster tied it up, so we're going to go to a tiebreaking question here. 
That was yeah. just based Take on that, speed. Sith. I yeah. knew that and one. And that's the one we and spent knew I knew 20 one. minutes talking about. With you. I, that's because I you went to move. To, yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to move. But, it okay. takes time. And he speed beat me. Okay. Um, no, I, I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad. Well, you put your hand in front of my mic. All right. Here. Here's the final one. Here's here's the final one. It's a hard one. <laughs> what was Obi-Wan Kenobi's last line in Empire Strikes Back? Oh, he has failed us. No, 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 no. But there is another. No, Yoda says that. Shh. You're throwing me off. Luke. Stop oh, talking. He was our last hope. Copster wins. Yes. Yes, take it, Sith. Copster wins. That <laughs> boy is our last hope. Ah. But let me tell you something. That was close. I'm going to pout. I give you props for that. I'm going to yeah. pout. You're going to pout, but I'm going to pout. Before the show, you were like, really no, I don't, dude, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. You tried swindling me like a Sith. You're like some kind of, uh, you're like a, one of those uh, pool players, or pool shark here. You're like, you're like. <laughs> I'm really mad uh, that I lost. I'm not, I'm not that good. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I really should have had that one because I went for the full movement and you didn't. Hey, so I give you, you props though. You I, lose. I give you props though. I, right. Next time, Good I will go in Good with battle. some hesitation. Good battle. I find um, your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> impressive. Creep me Most under. impressive. From there, we go on to Duel of the Fates. Of course, this is where each week we take two things from the Star Wars universe and pit them against each other, much like I just did with you two. And the last week, um, this is where I forgot to do my homework. Last week, we pitted father versus son. Who was the better pilot? Anakin Skywalker versus Luke Skywalker. Now, normally, uh, my lovely co-host, uh, Maud, is the one who does all the totals. And I, as I drove up today, I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> so I don't have an official total. I'll do that later and announce it on the Facebook page. But by general eyeballing it, we think predominantly Anakin Skywalker came away with this very, very close victory. But there yeah. were some compelling arguments on each side. But first, I want to recap with you guys. What would you have chosen? Anakin. Anakin, for sure. Yeah. Both yeah. Anakin. I think oh, so, yeah. yeah. Reasons? Mm -hmm. Just mostly because we get to see more of him flying. Also, from such a True. young age and multiple types of crafts and pod races. Like, there's just so much variety yeah. and yeah. so much skill in every circumstance, whether it's racing or rescuing mm -hmm. or shooting. Like, <laughs> For me, that is more impressive. And we get to see Vader fly. Like, yeah. And the, yeah, and it, down. It, a lot of people I noticed on the Facebook page wanted to cut out the prequels from Counting yeah. or the Clone Wars cartoon, but you can't. Yeah, we do have a better That's true. Yeah. kind Clone of Wars. field to choose from with Anakin. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, Luke had some great things. Again, I chose Luke because at the end of the day, he beat him in a one-on-one -on -one duel. I yeah, think. I know Han helped him, <laughs> but the Force was strong with him and he took yeah. down the Death Star. But you, you go Anakin, why? Yeah, I think so, Anakin. I mean, you can't, you can't discount the prequels. No. They're there. They are there. They are you got to acknowledge that they're there. And he just, he did a lot more than Luke did. Luke. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. granted, Luke destroyed the Death Star, you know. Luke, he just uh, has variety. But Luke also crashed his speeder bike. I mean, speeder bike. Uh, oh, yeah, speeder bike. And the, the snow speeder as snow well. Speeder. It, it, they didn't really give Luke too much flying stuff as opposed to Anakin did. Right. And Anakin mm -hmm. just seemed more of a fitting pilot than Luke was. What do some of our fans uh, have yeah. to say about this capture? You grab some notes here today. So we got uh, Andreas Cabrera. He said, ooh, a little bit of controversy here, but I think it's hands down Anakin Skywalker. Not only did he pilot one of the toughest machines, Pod Racer at such a young age, but he was a master of maneuvering since w way before Luke Skywalker ever even stepped into an X-Wing. Okay. Yes. I like that. And Andre's a great guy. He was out there at uh, Kamikaze yes. with us. Uh, Join us. Definitely. Uh, all right. What else we got? And then we got right here, uh, Anakin, whether you like the prequels or not, right. you have to recognize that Anakin had more notable features as a pilot than Luke did. Yes. And then all for right. Luke, we've got some people some more. who got voted for Luke. So this is from Jonathan Dada. Luke crashes pretty much every ship. He oh, you want me? No, to this is an Anakin. This one. is My an bad. Anakin one. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> All right. Tricking you. Stuff. Yeah, that's not fair. Don't try and make me misspeak. It won't go well. Anyway, Matthew S. Floored. If I've got to choose between the two, it has to be Luke. Flying his whole life in his T-16, he flew the entire battle of Yavin without using the Force until he took the shot. Anakin, on the other hand, in parentheses or stub, <laughs> crashes twice in one movie. Come on, who crashes a cruiser? Yeah, I like it. Another <laughs> Luke. This one, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, we decided it is Ian, Ian, Ian McCory. Ian McCory! Exclamation point. Luke! He destroyed the Death Star, shooting into a two by two meter large hole and using the force and flying his ship at the same time. I wish we had more stuff in the movies with him flying. At least we see more evidence that Anakin is good pilot in the prequels. 
Yeah. But Luke so, with exclamations. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, I, again, I chose Luke just, it, it's a little bit of nostalgia, I have to admit. And he took down that first Death Star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think given the chance, he would have taken down the second. He just had other things to do. Very true. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is kill his father. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But Anakin, I get it. I mean, this guy, I mean, Obi-Wan says it in New Hope. He mm-hmm. was the best fighter pilot in the galaxy. Yep. So, um, And he, we all know he's very, very, he knows his stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So we have to go with Obi-Wan's assessment. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you got to go with Ben Kenobi. So this week, we're going to do this one. This one's, uh, this one's a fun one. This one's an, I, I may have thought this one up after too many whiskeys alone on a Friday night watching Star Wars. Uh, would you rather get a drink in the Moss Eisley Cantina or buy some death sticks on the bar in Coruscant? I love that. Now, this is a test of what uh, you think of the prequels. you got to separate what you think of the prequels. Mm-hmm. you got to go into the universe as it exists and put yourself there. What do you got to go into? Is this the most easy question ever? How is it answered? Look. Look, take some. We got pictures up. We got, got Moss Eisley Cantina. Stratton, answer. What 100% you got? Ca- Cantina. 100%. Oh, okay. First of not all, not even 98. No, mm. not even. First of all, a she drink. Likes the wretched and villainy. I do. I like the villainy. I like how, like, it's just like a kickback bar with want, all my friends. You want to buy some Dustix? <laughs> I don't like Dustix. I don't want to go into all the mind okay. warping. Wait, and did lose you say Moss Eisley Cantina is a kickback bar? Yeah. No way. I would, I would get along with everyone there. They don't allow droids in there. Well, you are kind they of dark. They would love me. What are you but talking you are about? You kind of dark. Yeah. Versus about, and guess what? Yeah. There's actual music in the cantina. Who goes right. to a place where there's no music? Okay. Yeah. All right. So much more okay. friendly. Okay. Copter? Usually I would go the cantina as well, but I'll play devil's advocate. Just because... Mm-hmm. Uh, the you scene want some in, sticks. Yes, because that scene, <laughs> Why? that scene in episode two is probably one of the only best parts about the whole movie. One of the only ones. It, it's, it's the only comedic moment that's actually funny. You know, nothing else, no Jar Jar or anything like that. And I just think that's just... <laughs> you, might get like, some, you might get some hate on the internet fine. for that one. That is okay. But I, I, but I actually kind of agree with you. We got the scene up there. You want to buy some death sticks? You like, don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to rethink your life. I'm I generally, just, life. just because that moment was surprisingly a lot funnier. Yeah, hold, hold that picture up, JT. I, 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 it's on screen, easier to see on, on YouTube here, but we're going to ho- hold up here for those listening on iTunes. This is why I choose the bar in Corson. Mm. The picture here, when you walk into that bar... I understand there's gambling. There's... N- it's, I just it's threatening. Know. It's not just gambling. When you walk in there, you ever been to a Dave & Buster's? Oh, yes. You ever been to a Dave & Buster's? This is the Coruscant <laughs> version of Dave & Buster's. You yes. walk in there, you got you got droid football. You got something going on in arena. You're watching. Racing. You got some kind of pod racing going on. You got some great food. There's The threat of being killed is a lot less mm-hmm. in this bar on Coruscant than it is in Mos Eisley. Okay, yeah. I get it. You're a bit yeah. of a chicken. You don't want to <laughs> deal with it. You want to stick oh. with yes. your little game. I want to go enjoy my bantha wings and watch and some non-music droid football. And not have to watch your... it back at all times. There's yeah. there's better characters there. You got Anthony Daniels out of makeup, Ahmad Best out of makeup. They're hanging yes. out there with George mm-hmm. Lucas's daughter there in this uh, one little cameo scene. Mm-hmm. I want to dance and kick back and have a beer and run to Han Solo and all my pilots. Now the only death in good. the Coruscant bar was by that scoundrel Obi Wan, who, by the yeah. way, seems to like to go to bars and, and cut, people cut people in half, half. Yep. which is what I have a theory about the Jedi being the a holes of the galaxy. But Coruscant Bar. I I'm making my claim. Theory. Yeah. yeah, I know you would. I'm making my claim for that. We got the cantina, which look, I the bet the cantina's awesome. The cantina, look, when you put you Star get Wars some jazz music, when, Star Wars Battlefront. When you go into their cantina mm-hmm. on the Tatooine level, so and they cool. got the music playing and everything, I get it. All right, yeah. so cantina, two for Coruscant. Course. We put it to you. Yeah. You go. guys can go lose your minds on your death sticks, and your life expectancy will go way down. Way, and you're just, way down. I'll, I'll be kicking it. So kicking it with we'll go put that to our fans on the Facebook page, the Jedi Line. On the Schmoes No Network. We'll post it there. You put your comments. We'll have an actual real total next week with my other guest stars uh, uh, who are going to be, by the way, next week, Mark Ellis and Mike Black are uh, going to oh, be on nice. the show with me as Maude is still traveling the galaxy. But we're going to put that there on the Facebook page, also on Twitter. Join the conversation. We'll read your comments on there. Would you rather get a drink in the Moss Lysley Cantina or buy some death sticks in the bar on Coruscant? From there, we're going to move on to Forced On as we uh, uh, look towards the end of the show here. I wish we could spend 25 to 30 minutes <laughs> Just talking about this, but yes. I said, Copster, you're going to be on this week. You love Star Wars. What do you want to talk about? And you said, Legos. 
Absolutely. And I saw you pulling out all these boxes out here, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love all over again. As you see right there, the A-Wing is, is yeah. my favorite of Here's all Here's the A-Wing set here I'm on I'm iTunes. I'm sorry. This is a, on the YouTube show you're seeing. I'm holding up the uh, My Collection. Uh, a lot of them are still in boxes. Mm -hmm. Continue, Captain. Yes, and uh, I just remember, I, I when I researching for the show, I went back and I looked up all the Lego set pieces that, eh, maybe, maybe, maybe did I have this one? I literally had the first couple of sets, like all of them. And I just I love them. I, I literally I went to, I went on a trip to New York one time yeah. to, to go to a toy store just to buy Star Wars Legos, and it is that that speeder bike one that you see there. And, it's a great uh, one. Oh, it's incredible! Look at look. Oh, JT, you got so that one much. shot of me, and you haven't even built them yet. Oh, that's just what What are you waiting for? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm waiting for: space. <laughs> Not space that we're going to travel to with Chris Nolan. I'm talking about <laughs> space in my room. Yeah. As I mentioned, I am a uh, uh, older gentleman in my late 30s, so it's very space uh, when you have a roommate in L.A. trying to make it in Hollywood and mm -hmm. still at this age. You don't have a lot of space to play with, <laughs> uh, so I need to have some kind of dignity to, mm -hmm. remaining in my uh, apartment, uh, so I have to put some of these away. Mm -hmm. I have built some of them here. I got the TIE Interceptor. Yeah. Yes. The AT it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, I love, I'm glad you talked, because Legos is something I grew up with. In 1982, yeah. I dove in as a young kid. I got a set. You can look it up on the internet. It's called the Galaxy Commander set. It mm -hmm. came out in 1982, maybe 83, but it's the first Lego set I had that was large. It's a large large spaceship with three parts. I actually built it in 1982 wow. or three when it came out. It's still put together, never oh. been taken apart from that day. That's incredible. Um, years and years ago, 30 years ago, it's still sitting in my room, dusty as Legos get, but That's I won't crazy. take it apart. I thought licensed for Star Wars Legos was until 1999. No, Galaxy well, Commander was just space. Because yeah. I grew mm -hmm. up when it was Legos, Legos Town, Lego Space, then Lego Castle, yeah. and that was it. Oh, Lego Space. Which is interesting wow, because that. when Lego Star Wars came out, I didn't dive into it. Mm. Because I was like a Lego purist. It was like, I don't need characters. Oh. I, I already have like an entire cast of characters with my Legos. Yeah. I was the kid who built Legos and went to my friend's backyard. He had a big tree, and we actually built a working space station in the tree with uh, oh, strings and, wow. and things that moved out of our Legos. So oh, when Star awesome. Wars stuff came, I was like, ah, I was a little bit older. It was in my early 20s, mm -hmm. kind of when it kind of really hit. Now, as you can tell. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously, you really <laughs> you stuck with that. And the oh, micro so ships. Good. Yeah, cheap, the, the, uh, they're coming out with series two of these little micro ships, uh, the micro fighters. They've got a AT-AT, -AT, an nice. AT-AT, -AT, an Imperial Walker, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. Nice. Uh, I love these ones, of course, the, the Millennium Beautiful. Falcon, the Han one there. Sarah, what do you think about all this? I mean, I want to play with it. Yeah. Did I have them? No. Mm -hmm. You've been trying to build these since you got here today. <laughs> yeah, trying yeah, to open up my boxes. It's, it's not nice for yeah. you to bring things to play with and then not let me play with them. Yeah. It's quite well, rude. You can play with the ATSD and you okay. tie yourself. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you a Darth Vader one, maybe. But it was, yeah, Darth Vader keychain. Yeah. Actually, I really want the like, $500 Millennium Falcon one. Yeah, absolutely. And of course... Yeah, I mean, if you're going to well, get me a present. My old, Well, if you're going to get me a present, yeah. the one I haven't purchased yet, and I bet you know where I'm going, because yes. yes. it does cost about 500 bucks. but again, I, I can... <laughs> I really want it on display. I don't want mm -hmm. it in a box. And that is, of course, the Death Star set. Yes, absolutely. Much like Wayne Campbell in Wayne's World would go into the guitar shop and just grab that guitar yeah. and just play it. And then finally no, one day away. it's like, <laughs> do you take cash? That's, I go to downtown Disney and I just walk into the Lego <sighs> store there Gosh. or I go to the one in the Glendale Galleria and I'll just stare at it. Mm -hmm. Sir, can I help you? No. <laughs> no. Give me that some is, space. That is absolutely on my bucket list. Yeah. It's, it's that and the Millennium Falcon, too. Yeah, yeah. the Millennium Falcon's good. Uh, my friend Megan Finley has been on the show, has a Millennium Falcon in a box <sighs> in her I've living room. Opened. And I'm always like, one day we're going to build it. And F no, she says. No, no, <laughs> don't even touch it. And I agree. I have wow. the I have the ad at home. Mm -hmm. I just got a Target that just came out, and I couldn't. The box was too big for me to bring. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm wow. so glad. The Lego Star Wars is one of the best parts of collecting. Mm -hmm. They've done such a great job. It opened up Lego to so many other things. It did. Mm -hmm. You know? You can go get Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Harry Potter Marvel, Indiana Jones the Lego for a while. Movie, yeah, all the mm -hmm. yeah. I remember the Lego Movie or the uh, Indiana Jones. I have some yeah. the Indiana Jones ones locked away in boxes wow. in my closet that oh, are, you can't get anymore unless you. They had scour like a side shoot off of that too, where they had like dinosaurs in yep. it too. Oh, and you can make the movie. Oh man! And then of course the Lego Star Wars games. Yes. Are mm -hmm. some of the best video games out there. Really fun. Some games. of the you, yeah, I know about them. You know about them I or have you had a chance to play them? I have not played them. Oh man. I'm sorry, I haven't. Would you like to play them? I have homework for Star Wars, don't you know you this? Do. I have you so much. You do have some homework. And I have so much homework. One of those homework 
is find a Super Nintendo. And one of the homeworks, I'm going to steal one of those. You got it. And then get a Super Nintendo and play some, of your some original space. Star Wars video games based off the movies, uh, New Hope and and yeah. uh, Empire. Those ones were some of my favorites on Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. What what is your favorite Star Wars game? Uh, I think Stuckman brought it up. Was the um, was the N64 one? Yeah. Uh, Shadows the, of the Empire? Shadows of the Empire. Dash yeah. Rendar. Yes. Whose I, I, ship appears in, in New Star Hope uh, re-release. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, they, I know a, it's a Star Wars Commander on yeah. one of the little ships. But. No, no. He, uh, as as you go into the, the reworked entrance of Mos Eisley when Obi-Wan and Luke oh. and everyone's going in, Dash Rendar's ship actually flies out early Oh, on. that's blowing my mind. You have to kind of pause. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like there. a knockoff version of the Millennium Falcon. Well, there, yeah. we could talk about Star Wars Lego toys. I think it is a great part of the universe. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing. I'm so glad you decided to force this yes. on us, force it on us, and I love that mm-hmm. you brought your snow speeder. I literally been, bought that You've been for shooting it yes. a JT all day in the studio. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Crazy though. Boom! Did it actually shoots. Absolutely. Got him. That's awesome. Now collect that. Good yeah. shot, Jensen. <laughs> uh, so that has been a fun filled edition of Jedi Alliance. Before we go, we always like to pay a tribute to a fallen character or characters or notion inside the Star Wars universe. This week, before we go, we're going to pay tribute to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Today we pay tribute to Owen Lars and Beru, white son Lars, known the world over as Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Their gruesome end is arguably the most iconic death in the series. The haunting image of their still smoking bodies sprawled across the tattered remnants of their moisture farm remains one of the most memorable images of this series. But from a certain point of view, their deaths just might be the most important ones of the Star Wars saga. Owen Lars, son of Klieg, was born into a hard-working, simple way of life, and he loved that life. He never questioned following his father's footsteps as a moisture farmer on the twin sun-dried planet of Tatooine. He never dreamed of going off-world or even back to the planet of his birth, Ator. He, he liked his life. He was proud of his life. And when the beautiful Beru White Sun walked into his life during a fateful visit to Anchorhead with her bright eyes... Owen's place on that godforsaken planet was cemented. Owen and Beru's relationship was tinged with tragedy early on when Owen's stepmother, Shmi, was kidnapped by Tusken Raiders. In the ensuing attempt to rescue her, Klieg Lars lost a leg and would later succumb to his injuries, which by then was the same fate of Shmi. But Owen and Beru continued on, inheriting the moisture farm, and carved out a good life for themselves and the young child they took at the insistence of that old wizard, Ben Kenobi. That boy would grow to be Luke Skywalker, who dreamed often of leaving his homeworld, but never quite found the reason. Oh, sure, Owen didn't want him to leave, lest to become like his old father. Uh, When asked directly to follow Kenobi off the planet to rescue a princess, young Luke backed down, if we recall. But later, upon finding his aunt and uncle brutally murdered by Imperial stormtroopers, or was it Boba Fett, Luke had his reason to leave. So, that means their deaths might have been the most important in the Star Wars saga, saga, and they did not die in vain. So here's for the hardworking, sun-drenched, blue milk-drinking Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru Lars. You did not die in vain, for your deaths changed a galaxy forever. That has been another edition of Jedi Alliance. I want to thank Copster, Christian Rubicaba, my associate producer on Schmoes No Movie Show, yes. Sarah Stratton, the dark side of the Force-loving Sarah Stratton. Sarah, where can we find you? We know it's not on Twitter. No, it's not on Twitter. <laughs> it will um, be soon. <laughs> No, it will not. <laughs> um, you can find me at Box Office Breakdown. Mm-hmm. Also, I do some work with After Buzz TV and Anatomy of a Movie. Absolutely. And this year, maybe a little Game of Thrones guesting on that show, right? Oh, Let's yeah. talk some Thrones. That's Game what I love, too. Th- you're, you're coming on board. Absolutely. Copster? You guys can find me on Twitter at Copster15 and on Schmo Plus doing a lot of behind-the-scenes fun stuff there. Absolutely. Do not forget that Jedi Alliance has an Instagram page, Jedi Alliance. Go to our fan page as well. Jedi Alliance fans do some good stuff there, keeping track of Star Paws for us. And don't forget uh, to rate and review this show on iTunes. Do us a favor. Subscribe, rate, and review. Give us that five-star rating. It helps us there. Don't forget this, the Schmoes No Network has a lovely bevy of shows like Profiles, Guilty Movie Pleasures, Meet the Pro- Movie Press, Box Office Breakdown, and the main show, Schmoes No Movie Show, live every Thursday, 6 p.m. PST, for all the fun there where my new snark will find its home and uh, we play wonderful games and maybe we'll get you on one of these days for Celebrity Impression Dating Game. Yeah. And we're going to get you on for the Schmoes No After Show show. Oh, right? oh, yes. That might yeah. be happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. That might be As always, go to SchmoesNo.com for all the shows. Find it there. And until next time, this has been the Jedi Alliance. Thank you for listening because many Bothans died to bring us this information. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.